food investigation that could change your breakfast forever. What's the truth about the yolk? What every family needs to know about eggs. Eliminate it? What do I do? And just what goes into your morning sausage. Plus, Brooke Shields, from reluctant teen idol to confident woman. I'm now starting to celebrate my body in a way that I never felt free to do it as a kid. Coming up next. It's a food fact check that could change breakfast forever. We're talking about your favorite morning staple. Ah, eggs. So many of us still question them nutritionally. Could they still be bad for your cholesterol or your heart, even though they taste so good? Right? Or are they really protein heroes? You should be eating them every day. What's the truth about the yolk? Well, I've got breakfast tables all across America who are standing by to find out, are eggs good or bad for your health? Hi, America. Oh, they're all energetic out there. Today. The latest news to help unscramble all the confusion. Because it seems like a lot of my viewers spend a lot more time debating everything about eggs than actually eating them. Take a look. Hey, Dr. Oz. I'm Jade, and I'm here with the rest of the French crew. Woo! Let me introduce you to the girls. This is Amber. She is our resident expert in everything in life. I try to uh, Especially so food. This is Chris. She's been brunching it forever. All the time. And this is JoJo. And she is kind of picky. Uh, every time we go out, there's a problem with her order. There's a problem with her Everywhere we go. It's it doesn't Let matter where the day, anytime we go, all the time. All Let me tell you a little bit about it. It's not bad. I love eggs. I always get them the same way every time. Two eggs, hard oil hot. Look what I got today. Scrambled. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Dr. Oz, we need to know, what should we be eating? What's healthy for you? What is I don't know. Like organic? Egg substitute? Like what? I like egg white. Dr. Oz, we need an egg food fact check. Do you think you can help us out? Our brunch bunch is here in person. Christina, you say you always go for the egg whites. Why I is that? Do. And the reason why I'm on a new health kick, and I feel like, to be honest, Dr. Oz, it is high in protein and low in calories, and I'm trying to watch my figure. <laughs> Well, I agree with all that, and Jade probably does on some parts of it, but not the egg white part. I kind of disagree. I like the whole entire mm -hmm. egg. It's just more pleasing. Amber and Joanne, your thoughts about this conflict, this battle of wills? I don't know. I agree with My thing is all about taste. So whether you give me the whole egg or you give me the egg white, for me, it comes down to what tastes good. So I don't know. I'm going to have to agree with my cousin. I uh, oh, <laughs> oh, cousin. Wait, no. I know. I know. Let's I bring in my good friend, <laughs> Chief <laughs> Wellness Officer of the Cleveland Clinic, Dr. Michael Roizen. He has been at the center of this, researching it, learning everything you can, becoming the world expert on the yolk of the egg, because he's been at the center of this debate. What is the latest about yolk's actual nutritional benefits? So yolks have great nutrition. They have all the proteins you need, all the amino acids you need. They're wonderful. But we worried about them because of this yellow stuff, the cholesterol. But we were worried for the wrong reason. What they really have is a lot of this choline. choline. Yeah. Now, there's 100 times more choline than in your favorite cup of kale. Huh. But choline is essential. It's essential for brain health and metabolism. So the big question is, was it a danger? And is it a danger? Well, at the Cleveland Clinic, Stan Hayes and Wilson Tang did some beautiful research showing that it turns the bacteria inside you to produce TMA. And that TMA goes to your liver, that causes inflammation in your arteries, in your brain, and in your kidney. So a little choline is absolutely essential, but choline with egg yolks may be too much. All right, so let me show you why choline needs to be on every doctor's radar screen. So let's take a close look at how the substance in egg yolks may actually cause blood clots. So you got the egg, you put it in your body, right through your mouth, down into your intestines, right? And you ingestion. It can interact with certain gut bacteria and that gut flora, right, makes a chemical that, that creates something called TMA. Right? That's what Michael Royce mentioned. It doesn't really matter what it's called. It matters what it does. What it does is it turns into this thing which can cause inflammation in blood vessels. 
which can lead to the formation of plaques, right? That can narrow arteries. It also makes the platelets sticky, more sticky for, and that's important because platelets are great for clotting, which is fantastic for your gut, but it's bad if that happens in the blood flow to your heart or to your brain. That can lead to a heart attack or to a stroke. So let's check in with one of our breakfast tables who are standing by to see how this has influenced them. Michelle and her friends have been having breakfast right now at Beyond Diner. How are you guys? So who over there is a yolk lover? This one right here. <laughs> Guilty. Why? Oh my gosh, Dr. Oz. This news is, I'm an emotional eater. I love yolk. <laughs> they always tease yes, that whenever we yeah. go out, that's like my breakfast of choice. So eliminate it. What do I do? So what do you think about this news on the yolk? I feel sad. I mean, I, I, I appreciate it, but I eat it everywhere we, when we go out for brunch. Yeah, yeah. We go to brunch all the time, so. And we always make fun of her because of it. <laughs> all right, well, thanks for joining us. You're gonna enjoy this because I'm gonna put Dr. Roy's into the test here. He's with the Brunch Bunch. And he looks concerned, and so do they, about what you just heard. So if you absolutely love yolk, like our guest just mentioned, what do you do? Well, first of all, you should have at most one egg yolk a day. Now, the American Heart Association says, um, if you will, one or uh, one egg yolk or two egg whites a day, but um, I think it should be one a week, if you will. One a week? Yeah, because that's when, Sheesh. especially if you eat red meat, because it changes the bacteria. So, Christina, you're absolutely right. Oh, Have oh, a lot God. of egg whites. She's oh. right. No yolk, no um, problem. Now, <laughs> what you can do, though, is if you want to avoid that change in bacteria, this extra virgin olive oil, now for those watching their weight, it's a little problem because you gotta have four <laughs> tablespoons that's of it. That's a lot, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. That's 650 calories oh out of the gosh. rest of your diet. So oh, throw the rest. Or a little, or red wine also has the stuff that that's from that. So, that. so, so uh, but, but, but I'd listen to Christina. Okay. Oh, Here's the, the thing, the you just switch out your mimosa for the red wine, you're good to go. That's okay. my goal. Oh, okay. Torsten, thank you very much. Thank you can you. check out more helpful tips on the best food choices each day. It is a great new book, What to Eat When. Up next, in light of the recent yolk debate, could the future of eggs be plant-based? Don't scoff yet. What's the deal with the eggless egg? <laughs> She was adopted from the Ukraine at age six, but her new parents knew something wasn't right. It's obvious that her records were falsified. This is an adult masquerading as a child. They obviously need some sort of help. She is screaming, I'm going to kill you. You're gonna die. Truly unbelievable. Plus, breaking news. Is Lori Loughlin headed to jail? We have the latest updates on the college admissions scandal. That's coming up tomorrow. We're back investigating eggs, and now we're food fact-checking a hot new food trend called eggless eggs. Don't know if you've heard about them, but it's part of the plant-based boom. Ooh, everyone's into it. But is it all that it's cracked up to be? Our brunch bunch is back. Jade, now I'm gonna start with you guys. What do you think about these eggless eggs? Uh, an eggless egg? Yes. That's something I've never heard of before, but I'll be willing to try it, but I'm a little bit skeptical because we're egg experts. Yeah, actually. And I <laughs> don't want it to ruin my brunch, so I don't know. Joanne, Christina, questions about eggless eggs? I mean, I guess my first thing is, I mean, what is an eggless egg? Where does it come from? I know, can like, you fry it egg? the same way or what? How do you prepare it? You know, I would see the packages. I had no idea what they meant. I yeah, thought it was a yeah. play on words. <laughs> Turns out that it's not. So we're gonna fact check with you in a second. I'll be right back. Okay. Meanwhile, you know, if you, are you guys hungry? Eat. Oh, yes. Okay. Enjoy. Thank don't don't wait for me. Just go it. ahead. Yeah. Don't wait for me at all. Finally, right. yeah. So Daniel, Danny Boone's back because it helps show us what he's uncovered. Mm -hmm. What forms do these eggless eggs come in? Egg, well, they come in. They come in bottles and they come in dried packages. Okay, so it's dehydrated or liquid form. Two forms. Yeah, two forms, and you can always find it online. Okay. Nutritionally, how do they compare to regular old eggs? Actually, they compare really, really well. The only thing that you're going to actually miss is you've still got the proteins, you've still got the nutrients, but then the really cool thing is no cholesterol because there's hardly any fat in them. So maybe, maybe it makes sense. So let's first look at these eggless options that are powdered eggs. Yeah. Now again, it's not even eggs, right? It's powdered eggless. 
Eggs. Eggs. Yes. Okay. <laughs> What's in there? How do you do this even? Okay, so what you see here is the ingredients that you'll find in the actual powder. Now it's obviously powder form. So you have soybean protein, chickpea protein, you have nutri nutritional yeast. Then you have the, all these other little things like, you know, the plant-based sugars and then the natural flavors. Now, all of those things are then bound together and then by the magic of, and you might see this in a second, add a little water and then the, the powder comes into an egg form. You did okay. this actually. I did, I actually spent all weekend working on this. Because to be absolutely honest with you, I've never worked with this before, so this is amazing. And as you see, I, I was at some point impressed and not impressed, um, <laughs> because it, it didn't look that appetizing. But then what you have to figure out is, is how do you use it? Would you make a scrambled egg from that? Um, I, <laughs> Maybe not. You know what the funny thing was? I was actually tricked by what it looks like because it didn't look appetizing from the start. We eat, we taste with our eyes, yeah. okay? And what's the difference between the, the, the powdered eggless eggs and the liquid eggless eggs? It's just a little bit of water and a little bit of oil. That's, That's it? The only difference, okay? But then I would say in the consumer sense is convenience, okay? So what you're gonna see here is guys, it looks like mustard, right? Yes, yeah, so exactly. It looks like, <laughs> like mustard. And when I did this in testing, I was, I was like, no way is this going to look like an egg, right? So I poured it in just a touch, got a hot pan, and I'm using a non-stick so that you don't actually add any other oil, okay? So you, you can literally make eggs just with this mustard-looking substance. Yeah. The only problem for me was this is the price, okay? This worked out around eight bucks a bottle, Ooh. where 12 eggs is around 3.99. So that's the only balancing act for me that I had to come over. But then look at this. As it's forming, oh. I don't oh. know how it does it. How brilliant is this? And look at it. You wouldn't even notice the difference once it starts cooking. Look at that. Well, I gotta say, this, I mean, I don't, I, this must, I mean, I don't know how many eggs are in here, but we didn't use very much. It must be a dozen eggs in here, more than that. I bet you that it's not much of a price difference. This real question is, is, it, is it, it's easier. It's, for sure. yeah, yeah. But is it, is it, does it taste the same? That's the key question. Come that's on the over. thing. So actually, so let's check back with our bunch here, the brunch bunch. <laughs> They've been eating away, haven't saved anything for me. All right. I, now, I, I told you that I'd let you taste these eggless ones, uh -huh. yes. right? But here's the, the reality. That's what I've been serving you the whole time. No what? way. What? What? Everything you've been that? eating, no, the French oh toast God. is eggless. No, no. Yes. I like that. This, these are not no. actually <laughs> eggs in your front of you. These are, these are the it's eggless insane. options. Oh, oh my God. Why? You can't even tell the difference. You can't. <laughs> no, no, not, at all. not at all. You had no uh, idea. I don't know. No. Uh, so, <laughs> it's right, so, true though, right? So you have little wow. voting pads. Oh, now, I just want to be honest with this. Knowing what you know now, let's assume that it's relatively similar in terms of price and convenience and everything else. Just on the taste alone, yeah. Yeah. Which, which team would you be on? Would you be on the egg team or the eggless no. team? Oh, this is a decision. I know. Wow. So, I love my go ahead, team. put it up there. Okay. Vote right go now. Up. Raise your sign. Okay. Okay. Raise your sign, whatever you Ready? believe in. There right. you go. One, two, two, three. three. Go. Eggless, oh! eggless egg. <laughs> One regular egg. One regular egg. Subtle difference. <laughs> Majority <laughs> room. <laughs> you get the full list of ingredients found in eggless <laughs> eggs on DrOz.com. Up next, the side to your eggs, right? It's breakfast sausage, of course. Or is it the good, the bad, and the ugly? Stick around. Inside the scariest house on the block. I hear footsteps coming up behind me. And what we uncover. You feel chairs moving somewhere in the house? Will shock you. All new Oz. That's coming up on Thursday. We are back with our breakfast investigation from eggs to now those sizzling, crispy, juicy <gasps> breakfast sausages. And they come in all kinds of forms. You got the pork ones and the turkey ones. And I know you love the chicken ones because you're getting so many of them. And in my household, these veggie ones have really gotten popular, right? There's so many out there, right? So we've shopped the supermarket to find the good, the bad, and the ugly about all these. Chef Danny Boom is here. He's an insider who actually worked at a factory that made breakfast sausages. So regardless of what meat goes into it, how does the supermarket sausage actually get made? You've been there. I've been there. I've been in the trenches, Doc. And the, the strangest thing is that 
like in the last 10 years, we've seen a big industry shift, okay? It used to be the cheapest sausages used to be filled with filler, which was basically what, what we like to call mechanically reclaimed meat. <laughs> so we would throw all the bones in that was left over into a big centrifuge whisk, and then all of the meat that was left over would be scraped out and then pumped into, into the, the, basically the, the casings, okay? And so what you want to look for is in your, in your sausages, the first thing is when you open a sausage, you actually see a little air bubble in there. That means the fat has opened up. Okay, oh. that means that there's actual proper fat and, and lean meat that's been in the sausage. But the, the cheaper ones are generally more solid, okay, because that is basically the filler. All right, Ooh. so there's a big difference between the price points, but obviously if you pay that little bit more, you get a lot, lot better for you. Let's walk us through some of these things. Okay. So when it comes to the meat versions of sausages, breaking it down, we got, actually, let's start with the good. What is good about breakfast sausage that you find in the supermarket? <laughs> well, <laughs> There's, there's a lot of good. Okay, so we have pork, we have chicken, we have turkey, okay? And what you're gonna see here, guys, is there's, there's a difference. First of all, there's the difference in what we've seen. These are molded sausages, so they actually don't have any casing on them, okay? Oh. And they're also smaller, so that means they're cheaper to make. All right, that's the first thing you're gonna see. But then what you look is into the ingredients and the protein levels. Sausages are always gonna be a great source of protein, okay, that's the most important thing. But then, there's, and also there's no really additives into it. There's lots of natural ingredients in sausages these days. Um, but the big thing is you always gotta be careful of the salt and the fat. And the, and the bad side, the, the thing you concerns you the most is? Is always, there's high calories, high in salt, and high in fat, okay? Because the fat is always the filler. Well, they taste good. They do it taste the good, fat. and fat equals flavor. So of the meat careful. sausages, which one should you be looking for if you want to eat healthiest? Okay. Got pork, chicken, or turkey to choose from? I'm always going to go for the... I'm always going to go for the turkey. Turkey is leaner, it's got less natural fat, and basically I always think it tastes better. I sort of, on a taste wise, I'll go with you. I think turkey's a little yeah, bit better. Yeah, always for me. It's a tiny bit better. All right, now, like the eggless egg, there are meatless sausages. They've gone meatless. What are these newer versions? How do they actually mimic those meat sausages with this. Well, the funny thing is, it's kind of like the eggs. It's more or less the same ingredients for one. So we've got soy, we've got millet, we've got lentils, we've got chickpeas, and we've got quinoa. They're the, the, the substance of the mm. proteins, okay? And then they may use an egg white, or they may even use a binder, okay? Then they use water and the salt, and then there's the seasonings, which you can always, it always amazes me what's yeah. in the seasonings. Because you actually think there's actually more natural flavors now in the seasonings that gives it the color as well. A lot of turmeric, a lot of carrot in there. Um, then you I've got cane sugar, and then for some reason, we noticed in the ingredient listings, there's a lot of maple syrup. Both sugar, regular yeah. cane sugar and maple syrup? And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm putting maple syrup over everything in the f in, with my pancakes and my eggs and yeah. tomato ketchup, so why do we need so much? So I generally go for the not-so-breakfast sausage so I can save on the, on the sugar intake and the salt intake. Yeah, I, it, I, it does explain the sweetness, but it's yeah. mainly the seasoning that makes it special, makes it comparable. It really the does. texture's a little different. Yes, yeah. Okay. So how do veggie sausages great nutritionally? I mean, I, obviously, we avoid some of the bad stuff. Okay, this is the good side, okay? We've got more or less the same amount of nutritional value as like the eggless eggs. But again, with the, you have to be careful with the veggie sausages, it comes down to salt, okay? Now with those sausages back there and with these sausages here, what you've always got to look to is the back of the packet, okay? Mm -hmm. Now the back of the packet is always going to give you the calor caloric intake as well as the ingredient intake. Right. So if salt is number three, you don't want that in the ingredients list. The higher the ingredient, that means there's more of it. Right. Okay, so at number three, we don't want salt at number three, we want salt at number eight. Right. And okay. again, but there's no cholesterol in these, right? No cholesterol. Less fat. Uh, they're still high in protein. All right, so we wanted to find out which tastes the best according to another breakfast insider. So we brought in Faye, who's a waitress at Vian Diner. You're probably wondering where she is right now, right? She's always on her feet. So I thought she would give you a chance to just put something in your mouth instead of running around all day long. You've tasted all of these. Any thoughts? So I thought that I would go for the pork sausage, but it turns out it is the veggie sausage that I found to be the most salty and juicier. The veggie one? Yeah. Really? Oh it's my really goodness. Good. There you have it, everybody. The expert has spoken. Veggie wins, and it has nutritional benefits that your exactly. food spoke up. Exactly. Give them a chance. Give them a chance. We'll be right back. Coming up, the wonderful Brooke Shields is here and she's sharing her secrets to looking and feeling young. Is this one of them? This may or may not be one of them. I'll reveal the real things I do. Am I being punked?
today a very special guest. She certainly was a very pretty baby, but you actually might remember because she was in a movie called That. Don't remember that? Over the last half century, she's evolved from a child star to make it as a supermodel, very successful, right? And then she was awarded for her acting, and she got recognized for her writing, right? And now, perhaps most importantly, that pretty baby is a wife and a mother with pretty babies of her own. Please welcome my friend, Brooke Shields. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you look wonderful. Thank you. I see the Thank pictures you. of you on Instagram all the time. Thank it's spectacular. You. <laughs> Thank you. Join us. Okay. So, you know, the fact that you're famous for your beauty is obvious to everybody, but you've been very public about the fact that at age 54, you're still appropriately proud. Since a child, you've been in the public eye. Mm -hmm. And after 54 years of being washed, what is, what is it like? You must have insights into what it's like to be a woman in America today. Well, I had a really, um, sort of fraught relationship with the whole idea of beauty since I was a little kid. And, you know, you say, like, I was on the cover. I was a lot of, there was a disconnect between my head and my body. What's interesting about it now, as a 54-year-old, I'm now starting to celebrate my body in a way that I never felt free to do it as a kid, because when there's... <laughs> I, I think that when there's such scrutiny and there's so much attention paid to the physical, I just shut down. Right. So instead, I kind of avoided it and threw myself into my studies and threw myself into academics. And that was going to be, I was going to work on the, my brain and I was going to have a life independent of this whole crazy world that I was in. Like, I was gonna be a healthy human being. I was gonna have a family, and I was... So it was an interesting trigger for me. So your, your mom was your manager. You've yep. spoken about this in the past. Mm -hmm. how, how did she contribute or alleviate some of the pressure you were feeling? I, you know, she, we were so enmeshed. And she used to... She never shamed me about my weight or anything like that. But if she got drunk, <laughs> she would make a little comment here and there. But then in the next breath, she would say, you know what, forget them if they can't handle it. You know what I mean? You're just, you just be proud. You just walk out and you just be proud. So there was this kind of mixture always of these two things coinciding in my brain. And it was hard to really know what to do with that. You, you mentioned sexuality. In, in what ways did you not feel sexual in this process? Because I was labeled the Lolita as a baby, you know, even just as a kid. And then I do Pretty Baby, and that's a controversial film. Um, and Blue Lagoon. But then in the next breath, I was labeled the most famous virgin. So there was this kind of mixture of, yes, your body's your own, but you deny yourself, and the world was going to know if I lost my virginity. So I have this, I have this fear and this terror so I just thought, oh, just gonna not, not even deal with that. So when it actually happened, when you lost your virginity, did you feel? I, I ran out of the room down the hall, butt naked, because I was terrified that the world all of a sudden knew. It was crazy, like my brain had a, <laughs> my poor boyfriend was just like, hey, hey, hey. Was like, <laughs> ran after me with a blanket and was like, you're okay, it's okay, I'm not going anywhere. He was just very sweet about being patient. <laughs> So Rowan and Greer, they're 13 and 16, right? Yep. Joyful ages to have in the house. Joyful, yes. Just joyous. <laughs> I've, I've Easy, helpful, <laughs> polite, kind. They listen. Uh, they listen. <laughs> they, they engage. <laughs> yes. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing. It's the usual answer you get. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so do you, talk, do you talk to your daughters about body image? It must come up. The, I, I, they teach me. They have taught me. It was interesting because it wasn't until I got pregnant that I started celebrating my, just my physical being and being a female. And, and these girls love their bodies. They're just looking at the tighter, the shorter, the, 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 and it was so shocking to me to watch them 
love their curves and their form. And, it, and, you know, and they would say to me, Mom, you know, you should, you, you look good. Why don't you wear a bathing suit? Or, you know, why don't you wear a bikini? Or why don't you do this? And I would just think, no, 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 I've got this and I've got that. And no, no, I'm going to be a disappointment. And can you carry that stuff even with you? And then I thought, I can't do that because now I'm not giving them the proper ammunition. I'm not, I am not preaching properly because I want them to do something, but I'm not the example of it. You know what I love? I love how you thought all this through. Good. That's what moms do. You've worked it all out. It takes a lifetime to figure it out. Anyway, when, we come up, when we come back, Brooke's going to reveal more about how she looks and feels fabulous at 50. I want you to hear her three secret weapons in the fight against aging, and they're powerful ones. That's next. We're dancing it up. I wish we could do it. 54 years old, that's how beautiful Brooke Shields is. You posted on Instagram an image of who you are, which I'm so proud that you did. <laughs> Look at this photo. She has almost a million, a million followers on Instagram, and they didn't notice overrunning the comment section inquiring about her age-defying beauty. And today she's here revealing the three secrets to looking and feeling young. So I know you're, on, you're, you're, you're always in front of a camera. You had just a big, a huge yeah. campaign recently, and you found the technology that intrigued me. It's a laser technology. Yes. That sort of got rid of the love handles, which I sort of adore on women, but I understand why sometimes you don't want to <laughs> have gonna them. hang on to. <laughs> hang on. Okay. Yo, what is it, what's it called, how does it work? Um, it's called warm sculpting. And it's a laser technique, but through heating and destroying fat cells. It's not a weight loss program. That you have to do on your own. You have to work out and you have to try, but there are, after having two kids, there is a thing there, and there's well, things it. here, and you know, inside of my knees look like something did, did I don't hurt recognize. Did it when you were having the laser kill from, those cells? You know, for me, it didn't. I didn't feel like it hurt. But Brooke liked it so much, she became a spokesperson for the yes. company, so you must adore it. I and it really certainly love worked. It. it targets, I'm telling you, and it works after you get a, a few treatments. I've had a few treatments. I wanted to sort of get the message out that it's okay to avail yourself of techniques that exist. You know, I don't currently um, <laughs> have any plastic surgery, but I, this, I'm not against doing what makes you feel the strongest and the sexiest. Good. <laughs> I, yeah, I think that's the right answer. All right, let's get to the, the secret weapons in the fight against aging. <laughs> Brooks Beauty Bomb. All right, you say we can fake a youthful look. Teach me how to do that. You know, okay, always from the time I was a little girl would just, you know, put it on my eyebrows so it kind of keeps them sculpted. Um, Where would you put it on me? I would, okay, okay, hold on. Fix, fix this face. This is this, okay. this face he's home. <laughs> I, would, I would just, I would pat it under here. It's good for moisture, especially if you have to fly. I would do a little here. Sometimes I'm not going to touch your hair, but... Um, and you put some you, in the hair too. And sometimes I'll just do this, and then I'll get the ends because I get dead ends. But it's not, you know, it's not greasy as much as it's a balm that is multi-purpose, and even on your eyelashes. Right. Right, listen, you can't beat the price. Oh, the eyelashes. Yeah, the lashes. Oh my so goodness. It, it it actually conditions. What a nice little hack. Uh, yeah, it, it, you know, it's just a good little conditioner. All right, number two. <laughs> you mentioned some of its actual work. Now I didn't realize that this wasn't widely appreciated, but I'll share it if it's okay. okay. You had a total knee replacement. Yes, a, a partial, sorry. Partial. Just so this half of this knee is titanium. Well, you, you're even better. You're, not, you're <laughs> a $6 million dollar woman. Exactly. Right? But, so, but, so, but you, you got it from working out a lot, and yet you still feel so passionate. So Pilates has become your new exercise. Yeah, and I got it from dancing, actually. I'm just gonna do this because I, um, I don't have total balance yet. Um, <laughs> but uh, I got it from dancing on Broadway. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna just do this because I don't usually do it in um, oh, I'll put your knees. heels. So there's a place you could put it here and you sort of squat. <laughs> it's very ladylike. And you do this. Oh, and then yeah. you go back and you feel how Fashion, you hard think. that is. Yep. I said waddle over here. Or waddle yeah, this way. Gotta, now, there we go. Step there three. we go. There we go. Word around the there kitchen. we go. All right. There we Grub go. for growing. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, for glowing, not growing. Gro you might grow too much. Grow. Rub for glowing and going. Okay, oh. yes. It keeps you a little, uh, it keeps everything flowing, <laughs> so to speak. I um, 
love yogurt. I like just plain yogurt. You put a fiber cereal. A fiber cereal of your choice. This is your typical breakfast? Yeah. I'm gonna use my fingers. Please. Berries. Think about these babies. Yep. Thank Put them you. Over there. A little drizzle of honey. And it's a delicious snack. Oh boy, it's not a drizzle. Simple, but okay. easy. Again, like the other things you've shown us, very inexpensive. And there's no reason you can't automate your life to include this. And the fiber is really good. I find I need that now. Come on. <laughs> Bring our bands over here. All right, now, the final bonus, bonus secret. You say this to yourself every day as you have your breakfast with your bands, multitasking, your daughters are ignoring you, <laughs> all right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and they are things that actually that we can do all the set time, no matter what else is happening in our life. It's really, I've boiled it down. I really have boiled it down because if I just show up and just be present, if I keep it simple and be kind to yourself, and to the situation. And those kind of three things, when I just reduce it to that, I'm able to be in traffic without literally going off on, <laughs> on somebody. You know, you, you've always been beautiful on the outside. <laughs> it's wonderful to see how beautiful you are on the inside. Thank God you. bless you. Brooke Shields. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Last to learn from this woman. Pay attention to her wisdom. <laughs> Breaking news. Is Lori Lachlan headed to jail? We have the latest updates on the college admission scandal. All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. What do you think of when you hear the word eczema? You just imagine dry and itchy skin? Over 31 million people in the U.S. have some form of eczema, and almost 10 million children have the most common kinds called atopic dermatitis. These are what images of atopic dermatitis look like. But with these staggering statistics, chances are someone in your life suffers from eczema. But do you really know what it's like to live with it? Today, what's your eczema story and how to help stop this itch-scratch cycle? <laughs> Not a pretty sight at all. My eczema has affected me in all areas of my life, emotionally, mentally, physically, socially, in my relationships, in my career, you name it, eczema has always been there. My skin actually got worse when I was going into college because of a mix of extreme stress with my classes and uh, weather was terrible for me and led me into this terrible spiral effect of stress and eczema. I just don't wanna have to wear things that expose my eczema because I'm afraid that people are gonna stare at it or question it and it just makes me feel really uncomfortable. Beautiful stories. A few of my viewers are here in person to share their own eczema stories. Ethan and Ventura are here. We're gonna bring out your daughter in a second and Gabby's next to me here. Gabby, how long have you had eczema? Um, I've been struggling with it for a long time. I work as a pharmacist, so I always have to cover my skin. My patients think it's contagious, actually, sometimes. So it's very embarrassing, and I have trouble working and covering my skin every day. So, Ethan, what's your daughter's story? Uh, yeah, our, our daughter, we started noticing that she was getting eczema, like, a little bit around her, her legs, starting going up to her arms, and then onto her chest. And it's hard for her because she's an infant. She can't, she can't scratch. So it's been tough for us. Yeah, we took her to a dermatologist um, just to get ahead of it. Um, and, you know, we both have it, um, so we just want to get ahead of it and make sure that, you know, she's okay and doesn't flare up as bad. How old is she now? Four months. You just want to help in any way you can, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, it eats at you. And you guys have personal experience, so it's doubly amplified. So let's go through exactly what this is all about, because you have tremendous personal insight into it. I want everyone to be able to walk in the shoes of people who have eczema. So together we're going to create a, a life cycle of the eczema flare-up demonstration. And you all get to help me. Gabby's going to lead the way, right? For the first time ever, right here in the studio, I've turned everything into this eczema itch scratch simulation lab so you can actually appreciate it. We use some metaphors. So Gabby, I purposely put a little bit of sandpaper here because that's to reflect how your skin might feel when it's dry and itchy. And yep. Please, if you don't scratch it and describe. <laughs> yep, this is me every day. That's you? It's just like that. <laughs> it's a course. Very and, rough, yeah. Right. Difficult to you know, maintain and to hydrate. So once you have that 
feeling of your skin, you naturally want to scratch it, which takes you to part two. Yep. So if you don't mind, we've created this again. So I'll, I'll, I don't know if you can all see that. Yep. It's flaky all the time. Now, I don't usually, I gave my whole body to you. But you can <laughs> see what happens, right? Now, obviously, this could also land on your shoulders, your clothing, but it's reflective of what's going on with your skin, and your skin doesn't want this to happen to it, yep. right? But when it, when it happens, you have no choice. You itch away, all this stuff falls off you, and then you end up with this. And unfortunately, this is a fairly common problem because you end up with a flare-up. Ethan, what's, what's it like for you when you have a flare-up? When you've gone through the itching we just described and you have a flare-up? Yeah, it's like unbearable it's just it's like you're on fire basically it just and and even though it's not good to itch itching soothes it though mm -hmm. in a way so after you experience all this you want to bring some expertise in so i brought in bird certified dermatologist dr rosemary ingleton she's here to help she's going to help on behalf of my trusted sponsorship partner userin <laughs> so those three wonderful people we're going to come back to in a second sure. have told us their personal stories right. and that's what our whole show today is about people sharing what's really going on in their lives but as an expert explain to those who don't know much about eczema what's really going on so eczema is really a, a group of conditions where the skin becomes very irritated and inflamed atopic dermatitis that's the most common type of eczema and What's happening really at the bottom line is that there's this breakdown in the protective barrier of the skin. And what happens is the surface of the skin doesn't seem to have its ability to, to hold on to moisture, so that's why you get dry. There's also this problem with protection from things from the outside, so allergens and irritants, all those things come in and they set up this itching, then the scratching starts, and then you're in the midst of a flare. So how do we get relief from this cycle? This is a little demonstration to, I made to reflect what you were just saying. Mm -hmm. So think of this as your skin, right? Yes. And on top of the skin, you have these cells, but you have cracks now that develop. And because of these cracks in your skin, it allows things to get in there that exactly. normally wouldn't bother you, right? So what do you do? What do you recommend when your skin is dysfunctional, when your skin is red and dry and cracked like this? What you need mostly is moisture but you need a moisturizer that really targets the things that we're seeing. So you want something that targets the dryness, you want something that helps to protect the membranes, you know, to help these cracks to seal up, mm -hmm. and you also want something that's gonna help with that irritation, that redness, all of the discomfort. So try to find products that have ingredients like oatmeal, colloidal oatmeal specifically. You want something maybe with ceramides that help to seal those cracks in and build the structure back up and look for something that maybe that has licorice root extract in it, that's definitely going to help to calm the skin. So as, if you, as you put all these ingredients on, mm -hmm. you end up with a skin that looks a bit more protected, yeah. like this. And as long as you can protect these, these are not you know, highly potent, powerful things. These are remedies that we know over years have been demonstrated to be beneficial. Exactly. If your skin looks like this, are you a happier camper? You are so much happier. I mean, <laughs> it's hydrated, so you're not gonna feel itchy anymore. Mm -hmm. Then the redness and all of the other things come later, but it starts with moisturizer. All right. And you recommend specifically to, in order to alleviate, you said oatmeal, what else? Right. Oatmeal, ceramides are great, okay. licorice root extract, all of these ingredients are very soothing. They help with the redness and they also help with protecting the barrier. So Dr. Ingleton, what do you recommend to your patients, to friends, family, to relieve and soothe and strengthen your skin to avoid eczema? Eczema. One of the things that I recommend often is the Eucerin Eczema Relief Cream. I rec recommend it to a lot of patients in my practice who have eczema, and for a multitude of reasons. It's clinically proven, and as a dermatologist, that really makes me feel better when I recommend something that's clinically proven. But additionally, it is fragrance-free. It, it doesn't have any steroids in it. It can be used on kids as young as our beautiful baby here, as young as three months old. Well, be before I actually talk, talk to our guests who are suffering, mm -hmm. I know there were clinical trials done. Yes, there were clinical trials done uh, by Eucerin, and they found that when they used, an adult used it, there was a significant improvement in mild to moderate eczema symptoms mm -hmm. after as little as two weeks' use. Mm -hmm. And then in the children, they found that four out of five of the children who used it continuously, like daily, were flare-free for up to six months. And now, you all have used it for two weeks, is that correct? Yes. Big difference, right? Yes. Yeah. Has it worked well for her? We put it on every night after her bath and in the morning when we get up. And she seems pretty content. It's a lot smoother now after using the Eucerin. 
Well, I gotta say, you, get her an aging quickly. This is a beautiful <laughs> child. And Gabby, how's it worked for you? You've, got both, you've all been using it for about two weeks now, yes. right? Yeah. So I've been traveling. I actually recently went to LA, um, and my skin usually gets drier when I travel, and it's been so much smoother, and my eczema flares have definitely gone down. So as an excuse, I'm gonna pretend I'm examining her. Can I hold Hadley? Yes. This is, I'm just <laughs> pretending to, to wanna to manage the eczema. What I really wanna do is just hold her. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. It's just like a piece of candy here. <laughs> Congratulations. The best thing that ever happened to us was having a child, and having one that's free of eczema makes it even more perfect. Yes. God oh, bless you. So oh. beautiful. So listen, I get to have this gift, but thanks to our trusted sponsor partner, Eustrin, beginning tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, the first 5,000 people to go to DrOz.com will receive a coupon for a free tube of Eustrin Eczema Relief Cream. And we're not gonna stop there. My entire studio audience is going home with Eustrin Eczema Relief Cream. Yeah. Have these a good idea? Yeah. She's happy. Oh. Abby wants you to have it. We'll be right back. <laughs> so nicely made. From the cheesy, to the ooey gooey, to the super sized, no one is more on top of food trends than our brand new food trend correspondent, the Food God. Instagram star and Food God podcast host, Jonathan Chevin has tasted the good life, and now he's serving it up to you. Well, he's here today with another food trend that you will be obsessed with. Please welcome the food god. By the way, congratulations on your podcast. Thank you. It should be spectacular. It's awesome. It's oh, fun. So what's the big surprise? The new food trend we all have to know about. All right, I love these things. This is so simple, and it's only two ingredients. Are you ready? Right, one, two, three. <gasps> Coffee tonic. What? Yeah, it looks You're simple. Kidding. It's a trend. Write it down, you're gonna be seeing it on Instagram. It is a trend. It's very cool, but basic. How do you make it? Well, okay, there's a real science to it. <laughs> you pour it halfway, the tonic oh, halfway. Only halfway. No, only halfway. Okay. All right, okay. good. Halfway, here we go. Then you put some ice. We could use our hands since it's for us. Yes. I would have used my hands for yours anyway. Perfect, I like that. All right, guys, so here, this is the, the food porn moment that we like to say. Food porn? Yeah, well, that's food porn, it's a hashtag. Everybody does it. I mean, look at this, here we go. You gotta float, ooh, look at this, you gotta float it so it comes out beautifully. Look at this, I like to oh make a mess because I'm not a good barista. Oh my but goodness. But you have to float it. So then it's gonna drip down and that's like your Instagrammable moment right here. Look, look at this, how beautiful, it's like a sundown sunrise. <laughs> Upside down sunrise. <laughs> Wait, I, I, let me kind of taste it before we judge. Oh, effervescent. Hold on. The little coffee beans jumping around doing a little tango on your tongue. Wow, it's got a little tang, a little bit of a little bit of a bounce in your mouth, but it's amazing. Here's the thing, I adore you in part because whenever I do anything with you, there's something that smokes, something that explodes, burns, so there's no fire going, nothing overflowed. I mean, you're, are you losing it? Are you losing your touch? Are you disappointed in this? Well, it's beautiful, I, but it's just nothing, no one got hurt, it's come just. Come on, you think that I would just come out with, a, with something with two things like this and be boring? What goes better with coffee tonic than cannolis? Cannolis! Bring them out! Bring them out! These are from Alfonso's in Staten Island. Oh, they are? Wow. Now we're this. talking. Is this good enough for you? Jack, thank you very much. Look at this. Look at this, Look my at friends. This. Look at that. Guys, that's what we're talking about. That's a food about. god cannoli. Look at this. Mm. Who wants some cannolis? <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's, let's go. go. Let's, let's head them out. Around, Don't forget your coffee. Because everyone, you can How listen and subscribe to the Food God podcast for Look free on this. Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Remember, the power of change lies in the power of you. One person, one voice, speaking the truth and seeking the truth. You all happy with the cannolis? In moderation. Goodbye, everybody.